Okay. 
this pray. Our Father in heaven, we praise you and worship you. You are the mighty God, creator of the universe and our King. Yet you provided for us instead of taking things from us. And call us your sons and daughters and heirs. We also believe in Jesus. He is the Son of God who paid for our sins with his own blood. We believe that he resurrected on the third day and gave us the Holy Spirit before being lifted up to be with you, so that we can be led by the Spirit. We worship our God in Trinity and submit to Him. Dear Father, we continue to pray for this pandemic to quickly come to an end. Please have mercy on us and the earth. We pray for anyone who was personally affected by the pandemic, whether the effect was health-related, business or financial-related. Please embrace them in your loving, and never ending arms, so that they find comfort and confidence that can only come from you. We also pray for them to the rediscover the joy from your world. Lord, we praise you for the weather, good or bad. For several weeks, we pray for fire smoke to dissipate from the barrier. And for two weeks, we saw your grace with clear sky. We praise you. But last week, the smoke has come back with new fires burning in the back. Devastating many businesses and communities. We continue praying to Almighty God, asking for your grace. Please give us rain so that all these pain are washed away. We continue to lift up our government leaders with important responsibilities and authorities they have been given, please fill them first with your wisdom and health. Particularly, we pray for the President Trump and his speedy recovery. Please fill our government with those that fear the Lord. We pray for our church leaders, including pastoral staff and cell leaders. Please have their cup be overflowing with love, wisdom, courage, and hope. We also pray that our members find this time of remote worship to be an opportunity to experience the intimate relationship that Jesus wishes to have with each and every one of us. Please speak to us in our prayers and nudge us throughout our lives so that we remember your also, let us be generous with one another.
as you have been to us. Let us count the blessings we have, but share with our numbers. Please equip us with senses to nourish those in need and hearts to share. Thank you for giving us this time of worship again. And as we always pray, let our minds and hearts be fixed upon you alone, wherever we are. In your name we pray. Amen. Welcome everybody and uh, thanks for being here uh, and uh, thanks for being patient with us while we uh, delayed a little bit this morning. Uh, just trying to figure out stuff, we always try to figure out stuff and my goodness, I wish you could all meet, don't you? <laughs> I don't like this online worship. I, I don't like it too much, but I'm thankful, but uh, still a sort of struggle, and I uh, thank you for being patient uh, with us. And uh, if you can, it'd be great if you can help with the media ministry on Sundays. We need a lot of helping hands here. And um, be wonderful if you could uh, help us out a little bit. A couple of announcements. I want to make you aware of that uh, we have a special guest speaker coming this uh, October, mid-October on the 25th. And for the English side, Dr. Aaron Son is coming from Texas area to come and speak on the series, uh, you will be my witness the series. You are here's a very special message for us. And uh, just to give you a little background of Dr. Son, he is the authority on past uh, Pauline theology. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but he, Dr. Paul, basically, and uh, he's written many works on the uh, Book of Acts. And uh, he will present to us clearly what the thinking behind Peter and Paul was. So we can go a little bit deeper uh, as we engage in the Book of Acts. And for the current speakers, uh, he'll be speaking to us um, Friday night, Saturday 
night. Also, there'll be trumpeters for you to hear him. They are Zoom uh, live. So, uh, by the way, these conferences, these messages will be recorded, pre-recorded, and will uh, present to you, broadcasted via live on YouTube, so you can only watch it at that time, your worship time. So, have that in mind. Uh, and, um, and please share the information if you need some, you know, somebody that needs to be encouraged by the Word of God. And I really encourage you to participate in this Times X conference on the 23rd to 25th. So, uh, one more announcement before we read the Word of God. Um, that is, we have a very special announcement to make this Thursday evening at 8 p.m. It's not on the bulletin, but uh, we have uh, the leaders uh, have found the need to meet for you guys to hear for first hand some changes in the building, our church building, and it's a very important announcement. So, if you uh, are part of Cornerstone Church and uh, uh, you need to be informed, by the way, so uh, please uh, participate at the 8 p.m. announcement. It'll be in Korean, so if you can speak, you can walk up to the tent. Uh, if not, if your first language is not Korean and you can't understand Korean, we'll have a separate session for you guys as well. So, um, just have that in mind, 8 p.m. this Thursday, and the link, Zoom link will be going, gone out. Uh, to you individual via email, so uh, please have that in mind and schedule block that time off for us. Thank you. Uh, that's it for announcements. Let's read the Word of God this morning together. The Word of God is from the Book of Acts as we continue to here from God's Word on the series, you will be my witnesses, martyrs series. Chapter 8 and chapter 9 is the passage scripture that we're we'll looking more depthly today. Uh, but we'll read just the selection for this time right now. I read chapter 8 verse 1 to 3 and then chapter 9 verses 17 to 19 and then 26 to 31. So just uh, we skip around a little bit in the two chapters for chapter 8 and 9. So just follow with me. I'll direct you. Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to 3 is the verse of the day. And Saul approved of his execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the re regions of 
both Judea and Samaria except the apostles. Did all men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him? But Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Let's go to chapter 9, verse 17 to 19. Seventeen. And Ananias departed and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized and taking food, he was strengthened. Let's go to 26. And when he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples, and they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared to them how on the road he had seen the Lord who spoke to him and how at Damascus he had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. So he went in and out among them at Jerusalem, preaching boldly in the name of the Lord. And he spoke and disputed against the Hellenists, but they were seeking to kill him. And when the brothers learned this, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. Amen. And pray for us one more time. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful word. It's not just history. Holy Spirit, you're speaking to us this morning. Help us to be attentive and open to what your word has to say for every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I uh, mention the word dynamic duo, what comes to mind? You know, something in pairs, right? Something that goes well together, like bagel and coffee. Right? 
or coffee and donut makes <laughs> it's better a uh, combination. Or if I mention the name Romeo, you gotta have Juliet. There is no Romeo and Juliet without Juliet. Or Romeo. With the with hamburger, she gotta have Wash oh, be careful. <laughs> My wife is watching. French fries. But you gotta have those two together. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is the perfect pair. Uh, and, and you think about Joseph Park, the perfect pair is Jim Park. <laughs> uh, you said the right words, right? Um, you know, I want to kind of stay on Batman for a little bit. When I was uh, young, younger than I am right now, uh, my favorite superheroes was you know, Batman. Everybody likes Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, all these super superheroes, but Batman is special. Uh, and uh, because Batman has a dark history, right? He, his parents were murdered in the comics, and uh, he grew up in a, a dark, uh, you know, family background. But uh, I liked Batman because. He represented justice, he represented strength and courage, and a citizen who is responsible, who is contributing to community. I like that part about Batman, but because Batman has a dark history, he needed a counterbalance, and uh, he needed a robber. He's more than a sidekick, right? Uh, and uh, because of his childhood trauma, Batman, he needed this more comical, more lighter, you know, companion, Robin. And so, the dynamic duo, you know, Batman and Robin. Maybe perhaps these days, all the Batman movies are so dark because they're missing Robin. I hope some of the movie directors will listen to this. They're missing Robin. That's the problem. When people are together, when we team up, there's synergy, there's energy, and there's Holy Spirit working in the people of God. We can do amazing things that one person solo could never accomplish. People know this innately. So inherently you know this because I uh, so maybe uh, you know people like golf and tennis, all these solo sports, but they love team sports more. He loves 49ers, right? I don't know how they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, who, who 
teamwork of witnesses to convert. So, if we look at that teamwork this morning, we learn some principles and the grace of God we can apply to our church and ourselves. What is the witness dream team? Dream team is the sermon title.